Hello, everybody, and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports and uh, a bit of a nightmare game for uh, the baby box. Losing to Argentina, 31 points to 12. Uh, remain second um, due to the, a good points difference, but we'll have it all to do against England next weekend, who have got a perfect two from two. Um, and, uh, yeah, that performance from the baby box really throwing that group completely open with them currently tied uh, with Argentina, Fiji at the moment with zero Let's get into the game, shall we? Um, we talk about masterclass from Argentina, potential disaster class, it must be said, from the baby box, who were, to put it very bluntly, awful. Very, very awful. Um, started started badly and never really got into the game, to be perfectly honest. And it's worrying signs for a baby box side, which is not impressed in the last sort of 18 months. Got a third last year at the tournament, but this year in particular have not looked um, at their best, which is frustrating because from a coaching perspective, they were good players there, but we're not seeing that um, translate into results. And tonight I saw a team that looked better coached, better uh, motivated, for example, and and better in all sorts of aspects in the form of Los Pamitas and a baby box side, which kind of looked a bit toothless, if we're going to be brutally honest. Um, so it was an awful start. Um, and I'll tell you what, that that uh, that rolling more of Argentina's is incredibly impressive. Um, and it led to a early try in the third minute. Gracing Raval is first of two tries early on. And uh, a minute later, um, to Luca adding, uh, sorry, three minutes later, a bit of Scone going over in the blind side, completely untouched actually. So, you know, junior box 12 0 down after seven minutes. Not ideal at all. Had to find a response, couldn't find a response. And another good rolling more from Argentina saw Gracing Raval go over for his second try in the 21st minute, which meant the junior box were behind 17 points to nil at half time. And uh, I sort of felt they had to score before half time. They had to find a way into the game. But they really, really didn't look like they were at the races. The handling was dreadful. Conditions were poor. They were. But it's not even just about the conditions. You know, we saw three or four penalties in the first sort of 10 minutes. Um, players completely isolated. Turnovers here from Argentina. I think they won two penalties in that first sort of 10, 15 minutes for uh, uh, for South Africa holding on at the breakdown. They just, when we did make, for example, a break, no backup, no support, for example, ball retention was horrible. Um, our kicking game wasn't quite there. And then as the rain started to come down, the ball became a bar of soap. And I think at one stage, Argentina had more knock-ons, but you look at the type of knock-ons from the Barry box, and that's really unacceptable. You know, that kind of basic st skills were really lacking um but it's it's a it's it's a really disappointing first half which you think well you change a few things maybe put a couple of placements maybe things turn around didn't really see any changes i mean we saw an early substitution um when uh thomas dyer replaced uh jacobus i don't think he was having a bad game so i don't think it was a bit of an odd substitution but um the next thing is when you go to the second half you've got to score first didn't do that. Uh, Elias going over for uh, Argentina in the 47th minute. And uh, Luca adding the extra 24 0. Um, there was finally um, a bit of hope for the baby box with a penalty try in the 51st minute. And Bruno going off with a yellow card, but uh, couldn't make a count, to be perfectly honest. And um, they then got a yellow card, yellow card to, to Ledesma later on. Um, also didn't really make much of a difference, but uh, the, the killer blow was really Liam Kuhn, who I felt, felt really struggled um, throughout the game when he um, he was charged down and uh, Panuka's got ahead of him and, and scored 20, 20, 29 points to 7. And then a late consolation try from Batabila Shlikani, who tried hard, but didn't manage to affect the game as much as he'd like to and his talent should. Um, and Liam Cohen pushing the conversion well wide in a game where I felt he really struggled. I think my biggest frustration, and then so a lot of people in the sort of live chat were saying, is that's not our best side. I think that's the problem. I think we've seen a lot of chopping and changing, for example, in the last few months during the rugby championship, during the under 20 championship. And it's frustrating that the coaches don't seem to know what their best side is. Um, and obviously, you have to make changes. I mean, you, it's, this is a tournament where you play every five days, not every seven. Um, these kids are not play, used to playing a lot of rugby, so you've got to make sure they are fresh. But there were just some, and, and the, 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 despite the team not being maybe at its best, make decisions, make the big calls. You know, I felt there should have been a change at 10 much earlier. There should have been a change at 15 um, much earlier. Um, I think that the pack was going nowhere um, and, and we were str struggling in front row. So they make a change, put him in a new. Luca Buckers, for example, had a really tough game at hooker and uh, I think waited far too long to put on Ethan Bester. 
Um, I mean, unfortunately, Buckers, I mean, one of the tries scored, I think it was their last try, you know, defensive, five minute defensive line, and he, the ball gets he's stuck in his hands. He ends up throwing it about two meters above, I mean, a half a meter above the ground. Um, and the Argentinian player says, oh, cool, I'll grab that, thanks, and just dives over. So those kind of basic issues, you know, are player issues. But I think for me, it looked so directionless. We didn't adapt to the conditions. We didn't play a game plan that allowed for us to come cope with the conditions. And that's on the coaching staff. Not picking the right players, not getting a, co- a, a plan right. There's no shortage of talent in the side. But to be is going to be a great player. J.F. on here is already capped for the Bulls. Um, you've got a Lorenzo Julius in there. He's, 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 a, he's a proper, proper player. Um I think Little Little Besta is a is a good finisher, but Tion Yaku is not a bad player either. But they're in a system and in a team at the moment which is just knocking the best out of them, and that is cause for concern. I'm not worried about the players so much. They'll fall themselves into the various unions. You know, I think our structures are very good where they're not going to get lost in the system because of one bad under twenty campaign. But this is a competition we should be challenging for. We should be looking to win this, and we're going to play like that. We're just not going to win this if we're going to be brutally honest. And that's frustrating because it's our own tournament. You know, we always seem to have it here. Once again, while we have in Stellenbosch and it continues to rain and be piss poor conditions. But, you know, what has happened, you know, they, they, they basically bring it on themselves by competing, having it there. But, uh, yeah, frustrating times. What do you think? What needs to change? Obviously, you can't change Koji's top mid-tournament. So the big thing is what can change between now and next week, Tuesday? Player-wise, for example, game plan-wise, what tweets can we make to try and keep ourselves alive in this competition? Let me know down in the comments below. Smash like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.